Are we right? Okay, we're moving. Uh, tragically, I can report uh, that we have now seen our first death here in Brisbane as a result of the Brisbane floods. This morning, a 24-year-old man in Durack died in floodwaters. Early reports indicated that the man walked around road-closed signs into a property that is believed to be his father's property to check that property. Unfortunately, as he walked, uh, he was sucked into a stormwater drain. His body has now been recovered and it's confirmed that the man has died. This is a tragedy. Uh, a 24-year-old man has lost his life as a result of floodwaters here in Brisbane. I think it's in timely for me to repeat the message that I gave this morning. Authorities are still on high alert. This incident is not over. This is still a dangerous natural disaster. The floodwaters are moving very fast. They might in some parts of your neighbourhood look still on the surface, but there is massive activity happening in our stormwater system. Please, I do understand how keen everybody is to get back into their houses, to go, back, to go out and have a look at what's happened to their neighbourhoods. These are still rapidly moving, swirling, dangerous waters. As I've said, we've now we can now confirm that we've had the death of a 24-year-old man at Durack this morning, our first death associated with the flood here in Brisbane, and the 14th death this week as a result of floods. This is uh, very sad news. Uh, I send my condolences to his family. He was clearly trying to do the right thing, checking his dad's property, but he shouldn't have been in those waters, uh, and unfortunately it's claimed his life. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe out there. It's a dangerous place right now. Uh, I know it's fascinating to look at, and I know people are wanting to take their children out to see it. We've already had one death. Let's not see any more as a result of Brisbane's flooding. Did you want to add something? Uh, thank you, Premier. Only to say that this was avoidable, and that has got to be the key message. Personal safety must be considered above all else. People need to be patient going back to check properties. Uh, this is exactly what we were afraid would happen. Um, it, it is avoidable and will be avoidable if people just wait a little while until those areas are made safe. If there are any closure signs, please obey them. Please wait until these waters reside. Uh, it is still a very dangerous situation in and around the streets and suburbs of Brisbane and Ipswich. Uh, there will be plenty of time uh, in the weeks and months to come to clean up, uh, to look at photos, to remind ourselves of what has happened. Right now, we don't want to see any more loss of life and we don't want to see any injuries. Underneath those floodwaters are rapidly moving, dangerous, sharp objects. Walking through waters, even only up to your, uh, to your ankles, can mean that you'll be at risk of uh, serious injury. So please, stay safe out there, people. Uh, it is still a very dangerous situation. There's been apparent reports that there's some concern um, with the Vision um, building site in Brisbane that could be destabilising land and buildings around it. Can you confirm that? Uh, that issue was uh, discussed at the uh, State Disaster Management Group this morning. Assessments have been done of the, uh, the Vision site. Uh, as you can imagine, it's a very, very large hole in the ground and it's now full of a lot of water. Uh, I have been briefed that those assessments indicate that the integrity of uh, the shorings in that uh, system are, are safe. Can you tell us what's happening with the island party boat today when, when it will be exploded, I believe? Uh, there are st there, uh, my understanding, and Ian, you might be in a better position to, uh, to give some more details. At this stage, we believe that we can secure that boat, uh, particularly now that... Uh, the waters are not continuing to rise, but it will take quite a bit of effort, and that effort is being, being maintained. I'll invite Ian to make some comments. We do have naval uh, diving teams ready uh, to deploy if, uh, that, if scuttling is believed to be necessary, but at this stage, uh, marine architects are confident that if they can keep the... Uh, they're basically operating the boat. The engines are holding the boat. So if they can continue to operate it, then it will be maintained and secure. What section of the river? It's sort of across the road from what was Oxley's on or the regatta. It's parked on the South Brisbane, near the glass factory there at one of those wharves. So they're... Do you want to... Oh, certainly. Um, uh, we have uh, made allowances for every contingency, and that's why we brought in the Navy specialists, uh, who, as a last resort, uh, could be deployed to scuttle that vessel. That is a last-ditch uh, option that we don't think is necessary at this stage. In the last 24 hours, extra mooring lines have gone on that boat and within the next uh, 
12 hours or so, we will refuel that boat using ADF uh, support because uh, obviously with the engines running, there is a, uh, a fuel issue. Uh, they've got 20 hours of fuel on board, we know of, but we know that we'll need to run this vessel probably for the next three days uh, until this uh, flood event uh, subsides. The plan then is to move the boat as soon as possible to safety downstream. Uh, certainly, um, the Mogul Ferry is, con is considered stable at the moment. Um, an extra anchor was brought in uh, overnight and attached, as I understand it this morning, to that ferry. Um, uh, we consider that that matter is stable. So uh, the Defence uh, helped assist or assisted uh, Maritime Safety Queensland, Queensland to relocate that uh, it was a one and a half tonne uh, anchor last night and located it there this morning with, uh, and it was attached at first light. I should say in relation to the boat known as the Island, it has a lot of uh, history here in Brisbane. Many people won't know this but it was originally uh, a vehicle bar, vehicle ferry that effectively was the gateway bridge. It was the ferry that took vehicles across the mouth of the Brisbane River before the gateway bridge was built so it has a lot of history. Uh, it uh, it was a very serious vehicle transport uh, barge before it took on its life as a party boat, uh, and uh, we certainly hope that we'll be able to keep that uh, that barge in, intact. There are a number of hoaxes surfacing on uh, social networking sites of things like, you know, Wyvernhoe Dam is about to breach. What's your advice to people who read those things and are becoming distressed by them? Unfortunately, when events like this happen, uh, rumours can escalate very, very quickly and they can do a lot of damage. Uh, this, these events can be quite scary and I know that uh, the best thing that we can do is give you regular, updated, accurate information. That's why we are holding these briefings every two hours. Uh, if you hear or read on social networking sites... Uh, you know, rumours or, or uh, statements, if they're not confirmed in these meetings, if you don't hear them out of my mouth or out of the mouth of the police commissioner or deputy commissioner, uh, then it's very unlikely to be true. So yes, I've heard some of the wildest rumours in the last couple of days. Can I assure you the Wyvernhoe Dam is absolutely secure. In fact, uh, any danger to it has completely passed uh, with the passing of this water through it. Uh, so it, it, there will be, uh, inevitably, people who'll There'll be a bit of Chinese whispers and then it'll grow into a bit of gossip and then it'll become a full-scale rumour. And uh, I think some of the social networking technology we have has been of enormous assistance during this flood event. It's helped us to alert people uh, and people are using it to find friends and loved ones. People are using it to tell each other what's going on and that's all terrific. The downside of it is if, uh, if a piece of wrong information gets out there or a rumour, it can spread like wildfire much quicker than it never would have. So uh, please, there is a bit of wild, uh, wild speculation speculation out there. The reason we're going to continue for as long as necessary doing these regular updates is so that everything people need to know, even if it is bad news or frightening news, we will tell you here. I mean, with the floodwaters receding, do people have to be wary of returning to flooded homes once electricity comes back on? Uh, we will not be reconnecting electricity into homes until they are certified as safe by electricians. So there is a very big exercise that has to be undertaken, not only cleaning the homes, but then we need qualified a team, teams of qualified electricians, suburb by suburb, street by street, certifying that the house is safe for reconnection. So we will not be reconnecting electricity supply until that has occurred in, in the houses that have been completely inundated. That is inevitably a process that in some cases will take some weeks. Is it still 118,000 people? Yes. Yeah. We anticipate, hopefully within the next two hours, to have lists in both Brisbane and Ipswich of when suburbs are likely to be reconnected that can be done quickly. Are you expecting a bipartisan approach in government to the clean-up uh, Look, I think what we're seeing in every community uh, at every level of government uh, is cooperation uh, and everybody's just out there wanting to get these towns and cities in regions and here in the capital back and on their feet as quickly as we can. Uh, I think it is a situation that demands bipartisanship and uh, by and large I think we've pretty much seen that. Okay. Thank you.